All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. The next method um, when it comes to impact prediction is according to the form of prediction. So we have here, uh, for example, mathematical models. So we can describe cause and effect relationships in the form of flow charts or mathematical functions in which there are, um, there are predictive mathematical models available for particular impacts. Um, the next one example is a balance model or input or output model. So um, this actually establishes a mass balance between uh, mass balance equation for a given um, compartment, namely a defined physical entity such as lake or a volume of soil or an, or an, or an organism. I actually have an um, uh, illustration on the next slide. Um, when, we, when we say also mass balance model or input and output model, um, it changes in the content of the compartment equal equal the sum of inputs minus the sum of outputs. Just imagine an input and output flow. For example, if you have, if you have, um, uh, let me show you, I think I can explain more uh, uh, with this um, illustration. For example, you have a, a compartment X and let us say you know the exact volume of the compartment X. And if there is an input A, of course, you, of course, your compartment X will be added with your input A, and for sure you will know what is the current what is the current volume in your compartment X. If there will be an output N, and of course you will know um, what is the volume of your output N, then therefore you can still identify or you can still calculate as to what will be the volume in your compartment X. The same also with your input B. If you know the exact amount of your input P, then therefore you can also know what is the current um, volume of your compartment X. The same, also, the same thing with your output M. So in which, for example, um, um, we have here change in compartment X would be equal to A plus B. So A plus B minus output M and output M. At a steady state, um, if the, uh, the amount... Um, if the volume of input A plus input B is equal to the output of um, output M and output N, then therefore, therefore uh, the volume in your compartment X would be steady or would still be equal to the original state. So that's um, mass balance model. Um, the next is, of course, statistical models in which we can use regression analysis, which is the easiest one and which is the very common among um, studies, um, especially on um, the effects of time or um, an effect of one variable to another variable. Next is, of course, the field and laboratory experimental models. So there are AIA studies that they, before they do a, a field study per se, or before they do the real project per se, um, they will have first a field or laboratory experiment um, for them to be sure as to what will be the impact um, of their specific project or activity. We also have an analog model. So um, these predictions are based on analog uh, analogous situations in which impacts of proposed project are compared with similar existing projects. An analog model can be developed from monitoring of a similar project. So next is um, also the same um, with um, not really the same, but as one of the um, 
methods and impact impact prediction of course the expert opinion based on previous relevant experience or, uh, may also be used that is why um experts judgment is very important it's very important when it comes to impact prediction we also have choice of prediction methods so this is the appropriateness of a method for the test involved and of course the available resources because it will be hard if you will be uh, pouring out all your project fund in your EIA study. So you have to check your available resources. And um, at the same time, um, among the other form of predictions or among the other approaches of predictions, you can actually choose between them um, as long as it will give you or it can justify as to what will be your prediction of the impacts of your specific project or study. Uh, we also have replicability. So this is free of analyst uh, bias uh, because um, um, as long as you will state in your EA study that your um, that your methods are uh, replica replicable, then therefore anybody can replicate it, and and then for sure if, if since it is replicable, then there, therefore um, it should or the result should have at least. Um, maybe not identical, but, you know, the results should be near to each other. So, you know, or in short, you know, almost everybody can replicate it when we say replicable. Of course, um, one of the things that we have to consider when it comes to impact predi prediction is consistency. So the applicable to different projects to enable comparisons of predictions to be made. Um, that is why... Um, um, for example, on water quality, um, since you, for example, you identified um, total nitrogen. So after five years, you have to analyze total nitrogen of the water and not extractable nitrogen. Yeah, I'm talking about a parameter in, in extracting, I'm talking about um, parameter in analyzing nitrogen on water. So, for example, on your baseline study, you, ident you quantified, you analyzed total nitrogen. So, during the monitoring and auditing, then therefore, you have to quantify total nitrogen. Because if you will quantify, for example, extractable nitrogen and water, there is a huge difference between total nitrogen and extractable nitrogen. Uh, because when we say total nitrogen, you are actually extracting or you are actually quantifying all forms of nitrogen in the water. When we say extractable nitrogen, you are actually um, only extracted, uh, extracting the available nitrogen um, for um, extractable nitrogen for, um, let us say, um, available nitrogen for microorganisms. So when we say available nitrogen, this is that this is the form of nitrogen that um, organisms or microorganisms can accumulate. So of course. Total nitrogen versus extractable nitrogen, of course, there's a huge difference to it. So it will be hard for you to uh, compare the two results. So consistency, um, especially to the parameters. So in many cases, more than one method may be appropriate. So for example, uh, methods being used in air quality impacts, uh, publish, publish emission data for similar projects, emission factor model, um, emission standards, uh, Gaussian dispersion methods, expert opinion, mathematical or mathematical uh, deposition models. So when you um, when you did your EAA study and on your baseline information um, or baseline study, um, for example, um, you use um, you use uh, or you base your air quality index on the emission standards. Then therefore. Um, after five, seven, or during the monitoring and audit of your of your project or study, then therefore you have to also use the emission standards. You just have to be consistent as to what kind of method that you use um, when you did your BI, when you did your uh, baseline information or baseline study. So for us to easily compare um, the results, or for us to compare as to if there is an impact, adverse impact. Um, of your study or not. So of, uh, when we say um, determination of magnitude of impact, um, there are actually two methods to that. So we have cost and effect relationship. 
um, we have interpolation or interpolation in analogy. And of course, um, capacity and threshold concepts. So when we say cause and effect relationships, um, they are used to establish potential magnitude of change due to the project. So we have to consider as to what will be um, the effect of, um, of your project or what would be the, or we have to uh, identify the magnitude if, um, if it's really your project or impact um, that costs excuse me, that goes that specific, um, that specific um, impact. Next is, of course, the extrapolation, interpolation, and analogy. So when we say extrapolation, it's more of the extent of change. Um, it's based on extending, extending out the trend of a line. When we say interpolation, um, it is used to estimate the impact when impacts of similar projects are known. So if it's known, um, it is called as interpolation. Um, when we say extrapolation, that's um, extending or extending out of it of a trend of a line, or let, uh, I would say um, beyond the trend line. When we say analogy, this is more of um, uh, between an existing project and a new project um, that may be applicable depending on the extent of similarity. If there are two existing projects, if there are an already built project and you are going to um, make a new project, but these two are very similar, then therefore you can make an analogy, um, an analogy study of it or an analogy um, as to what will be the possible adverse impact of your study based on the existing project. When we say capacity and threshold concepts, this is actually more of the organisms, flora and fauna, um, that are on um, that are specifically on the environment. Um, there are areas, or let us say, um, for example, a lake. Um, we can actually calculate as to what is the assimilative capacity of a certain lake. When we say assimilative capacity, it is the capacity of the lake that it can hold a certain amount. Uh, of pollution or a certain volume of pollution. And then um, since we can calculate the assimilative capacity, we can also calculate as to what is the maximum threshold of the capacity um, that it can hold or assimilate, assimilate a certain um, pollution. In which on that specific case, um, you can be allowed to pollute. That's actually... Uh, 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 it, it sounds... Um, it sounds wrong. It sounds wrong, but um, I would say since there is a threshold, a lake, or there, uh, since um, give me a second. All right. So since the lake has a capacity to hold a certain pollution, then therefore, um, not a person, but therefore. Um, um, then therefore, let us say, there's amount of pollution that the lake can accept and hold um, since it can assimilate that specific amount of pollution naturally. There, uh, what I meant is, um, therefore, the lake can accumulate a specific amount of pollution and it can still undergo or it can still do its nutrient cycling naturally. And it would, the lake would not undergo or it would not come to a point that it would be considered as a polluted lake. Um, in which, therefore, um, if that, in which, therefore, um, if your project or activity would result to an adverse impact to a specific lake, let us say for a specific lake, and if you can calculate that the lake can still assimilate the um yeah correct um dr bakunawa capacity for self-purification correct um if the lake can still um be able to hold or can still accept the amount of pollution that your project or activity um um that your certain project or activity can give to that specific lake then therefore you can justify that your 
impact prediction or you can justify that your impact to the specific lake is still okay and still can be mitigated because the amount of pollution that you um, the amount of pollution that you um, given to that specific lake can still be um, naturally be purified or natural can naturally still be assimilated so that's what we meant by capacity and threshold concepts in which areas or regions have a carrying capacity for populations based on areas and resource resources so that's what it meant by um, capacity and threshold concepts uh, before we go to impact evaluation and before um, you will state, um, I know, I think you have uh, questions uh, to the impact um, prediction. Uh, before that, and we, before we proceed um, with the next topic, um, let's have a break.